Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? So this afternoon, Bethesda held their QuakeCon panel for Fallout 76 and gave us a vast amount of news about what's coming out for Fallout 76 for the rest of the year. So as you guys may have noticed from the title, we've got changes for nuclear winter, more details coming on what we've got to look forward to with Wastelanders and a whole raft of community driven requests and changes and quality of life adjustments that uh, include a huge number of things, including changes to the camp system and hopefully on the horizon, public test server and private servers as well, which will be absolutely phenomenal. So there's a huge range of changes coming here that are going to, in my opinion, fundamentally change the gameplay experience of Fallout 76 by the end of the year and uh, give it a very big refresh, I think, and be a really much welcome and needed change for the game. So things are looking really, really cool, and I'm very, very excited for what they've got lined up for us. So this is obviously going to be quite a hefty chunk of information, so let's jump in and take a look, shall we? So the first area they covered in the press conference was Nuclear Winter, and the first big change that's coming in there, the one that has been apparently requested quite a lot by the community, is a brand new map, a new playable area. So that's going to focus on Morgantown and the surrounding area. So you should be able to see from some of the shots on screen around about now. So we've got the main area in Morgantown, which is going to add a huge amount more diversity and verticality to gameplay in Nuclear Winter. Let's see, if you haven't already been up to the rooftops in Morgantown, you should definitely do that. There's some really, really cool stuff up there. Views are amazing, and it's a really cool area to explore. But that's going to add a whole new interesting dynamic to gameplay in Nuclear Winter in that area. Obviously, some of the buildings in um, Morgantown are instanced in load zones, so vault University springs to mind and places like that. I would imagine being as it's a much smaller section of map on a separate set of servers, um, they'll be able to do away with that and you'll be able to move in and out of buildings as well. I would hope they weren't explicit on that, so we'll have to see how it actually pans out, but that has a huge amount of potential as well. You can also see from some of the little clips and footage they showed us that uh, the area around Morgantown is going to feature quite heavily. We've got Grafton Steel, we've got uh, the Monongo area. They hinted that the highest area on the map is going to be in there, which I believe is Seneca Rocks, although they didn't come out and say that. They showed a few shots uh, very close to the top of the world, certainly of the ski resort area. So hopefully there'll be some very cool areas up there making their way into Nuclear Winter as well. And that uh, change in levels should make for some very, very interesting movement in uh, circle changes and stuff as well for Nuclear Winter, so that will uh, certainly refresh things and make life very, very interesting. And along with the new area of the map come, with, come new monsters and new creatures, AI enemies that are going to feature in this particular area. So that should be very interesting, add new uh, dynamic to the challenge as well. Uh, one thing they didn't mention that I'm curious to see how they'll manage is whether or not this is just going to be a flat change and the whole thing will shift to this new area or whether or not that means we'll have a form of map selection added in. It could be a mixed blessing. Other games that have map selection, I'm thinking primarily PUBG at the moment, um, have issues with that. Specifically that some of the maps that are less popular end up being less played and it's very hard to get a game on. And given that it has been hard to get games with full lobbies anyway on Nuclear Winter lately anyway, it could be some issues if they do that, so maybe they'll just shift the whole map up there, I don't know, just for a refresh. Or maybe they'll do a random roll, so a coin flip which one you end up in. Who knows, we'll have to see. They didn't really um, give us any details on that, but that's coming in the future. They didn't give us a specific time on when that will be. Um, relatively soon we got, which personally I would guess probably means September. But they didn't say, and it's just a, a guess, so that's just the feeling I got from it based on the other things I've said as well, so we'll have to see what actually happens there. They've also said, in a piece of community feedback, that uh, they are bringing in a new perk choosing system. So at the moment you get a lot of duplicate perks for Nuclear Winter and you get nothing for it apart from a little bit of XP and it's more or less a total waste and very frustrating if it happens quite a few times. So hopefully they should alleviate that. The idea is that if you get a duplicated perk it will then count towards a ticketing system that will allow you to buy a perk you don't already have. So I get the impression from this that the idea is that you can't get a perk that requires one special point and then just swap it out with one that requires nine, for example. You get a ticket and then once you build up enough you can get a more powerful perk or if you want to straight swap for something equal maybe you'll be able to do it then. But that should keep things a bit more reasonably balanced, which is cool. 
So yeah, end of useless duplicates hopefully on the horizon as well. Again, as I say, they haven't given us any details on exactly when, but my guess would be somewhere around September for that. That's definitely something very cool to look forward to, and hopefully will remove an element of frustration that a lot of people have had, so very, very cool. So, the second thing, it's been reasonably quiet on the new content front since E3 and Nuclear Winter, but we've all been waiting for, I think, the Vault Raids that are coming, and they've given us a load more detail, a vast amount more detail than we've had so far on that, so it's very, very cool. Very much looking forward to seeing what they've got for us here. So, the first of these vaults is going to be Vault 94, which, if I remember correctly, is the one that is at the top of the mountain range between the Mire and the Savage Divide. It's not far from the Red Rocket Mega Stop. If you've been down there, you'll know what it looks like already. There's a lot of plants just inside the entrance. You can get sort of inside the cave, but not inside the vault. And it's really, really savagely overgrown. So, apparently that's going to feature quite heavily in uh, the new vault. So, this is going to be the first one, and obviously there are going to be more to follow. Um, from what they have said, particularly Chris Mayer, who's a um, development manager, uh, it's going to be a very expansive sort of raid area. So hopefully that means they've learnt the lessons from the burrows and it'll actually be quite a significant size. Um, and it's also going to be very challenging again. Hopefully they've learnt that lesson. Uh, the idea is that it is a four player raid. You're supposed to do it in a group. You can do it in a duo, trio or even solo it if you want but it will be extremely hard to do, they've said. Of course, they said that about the Burrows, so... Swings and roundabouts, but apparently the, the team at Bethesda basically haven't been able to solo it. You, you might be able to solo that content. There's no way I can. People in work yeah. can. <laughs> I, somebody at work with a whole play test, they, fig they figured it out. It is hard. Uh, maybe one or two have. There was a slight hint of that in there, but uh, on the whole, it's not going to happen. So it sounds like it's going to be a real challenge. Speaking of challenge, there's going to be three difficulty levels you can select when you go into these vault raids. Uh, the lowest one being novice, something like that. And then the subsequent two will add an additional time pressure. So they'll give you a time limit to complete the vault raid in, presumably with the hardest one having the shortest time. And within the vaults and within the actual raid, you'll have specific timed events. You know, you've got so long to get a door open and so on and so forth. Presumably way more than that, but they didn't give us that much information. So. You'll be under the, on the clock, under the pressure of time anyway, but at the higher levels of difficulty, you'll get more pressure from that timer. You will also get uh, higher rewards, better rewards, and better chance of higher rewards, presumably because there are legendary enemies in here, more legendary, more powerful legendary enemies as well spawning if you go for the higher difficulties. Obviously though, higher difficulty, the higher level you need to be, the more people you're going to need in your group, the harder it'll be to solo. Kind of what you expect, we kind of knew this going in, we've known this for a while. It has been, in terms of end game content, Fallout needs it badly. So this is very much a, a good addition in that area and looks really, really cool. Um, so in terms of the rewards we've got, obviously you've got the legendary drops that you're going to get anyway. Hopefully they'll be fixing that properly before too long, before this comes out. There seems to be an angle, primarily at least with the first vault, towards armour as the, um, the reward system particularly uh, new armors with new bonuses and there's a new power armor set in there that looks to be a very camouflage which looks quite cool very Maya themed which is quite interesting maybe we'll get a bit of lore in there about uh, how the Maya became the overgrown state that it is that'd be quite cool and interesting because uh, that's definitely something that needs a little bit of explanation in addition to that you're also going to get rewards for partial completion of the vault raid so if you don't succeed and don't finish the raid you will still earn rewards, which is very, very cool. It means uh, if you solo it and it doesn't work out, at least you're going to come out with something, or even if you do it in a group, which is, I think that's a cool little addition. I like that. They are adding, along with the armor focus of, at the very least, the first vault, um, a new mechanic to the armor system. Whether or not this is going to cover the whole game and existing armors, I'm not really sure. It probably will, but they haven't outright said one way or the other. And that is that um, you will get armor set bonuses. So it's quite common in other MMOs. Um, the one that springs to mind for me with that is uh, Conan Exiles. If you have a, a full set of matched armor, you get a little bonus. So that's something that we're going to be getting along with these vault raids. And um, definitely focusing on the armor that you get from the vault raids, but presumably they'll be adding some of that into the rest of the game as well, which is cool. It's also going to focus on the concept of three weekly missions within the vault raid that will change from week to week. So week one will be one mission, week two will be the next one, week three will be the next one, and then it will come around full circle and start again. 
so it's going to be a rolling thing. So hopefully that'll keep it fresh and keep giving you new challenges and new things to do. Presumably gives them the option to add more in later as well, which will be quite cool. The first vault, as I said, was going to be Vault 94, that's at the top of the Savage Divide. Uh, following that, based on player feedback and how it works out and so on and so forth, no date yet, they're going to be doing Vault 96 as the second one. I haven't given any details on that, but other than that, it will be coming. So the release date provisionally for this, you can see it on the roadmap they've put up, is uh, August, provisionally August 20th. Just say most of the release dates mentioned in here are provisional. It's probably sensible with the issues they have from time to time. Um, they do push things back, so it is what it is. But yeah, we're looking at second part of August, August 20th, for the first Vault Raid, which I'm sure a lot of people will be very excited for. I'm looking forward to trying it out myself, which is cool. So, back at E3, they announced Wastelanders and gave us a trailer for that, which is looking very, very cool. And so far, we know that it's going to bring NPCs back to the Wasteland, back to the Wasteland, which is very, very cool. Fallout 3 style dialogue trees, which are actually confirmed as being modelled after Fallout 3 now. It was very obvious as to where they were going. I don't know if they outright said it or not. They have confirmed it here either way, so Fallout 3 esque. Obviously, it'll be updated and modernised, I'm sure, but going back towards that vibe. So you've got a list of options and much more complex, much more dynamic dialogue system coming with the NPCs in November is when they're targeting for it. So they've made it very, very clear that both at E3 and again here at uh, QuakeCon that this is going to fundamentally change the gameplay experience in Fallout 76. This is the biggest overhaul, biggest change and comes with a load of additional overhauls as well that uh, has been made to Fallout 76 since it launched and uh, it's going to be absolutely epic and huge. They've basically said that the aim with Wastelanders is to completely saturate the map with uh, Wastelanders based experiences. So obviously the existing questline will still be there but on top of that all the Wastelanders stuff, all the new settlements they're putting in there, there'll be events, there'll be random encounters, you can run into NPCs around the map when you're out exploring so this is really going to fundamentally fill the world with life, which is really, really cool. Definitely up for that. It should be a massive refresh that I think the game needs, because we've all been playing a lot of it for a long time now. So we're very, very ready for that. I know I am anyway. So that's going to be very, very cool. The Wastelanders update, as we know, is going to bring significant um, new factions to the game. The major two being the Raiders and the Settlers, so that's going to be the major two archetypes. But within that, they've also told us today there are going to be sub-factions. So you're going to have Raiders in Settlements, who apparently are going to be more of a Shades of Grey style thing, rather than the kind of extremists we know and love from the past games. So the ones in Settlements will be more aggressively geared towards protecting themselves, their own survival, rather than outright brutality towards other people. Uh, it's going to be a bit more of a middle ground, although you will of course find raider groups out and about and around the wasteland who are more traditional style raiders, I suppose. Um, focused on much more aggressive styles and much more... Uh, they mentioned cannibals, so that would be interesting. And that sort of thing. But within the settlement side of things, they'll be much more aggressively defensive types, right? and protecting their own survival, that sort of thing, which is cool. That's going to add a new dynamic we've not had to raiders before. And a similar principle is going to apply to uh, settlers as well. They're going to have their own motivations. Some will be positive, some won't be. Some of them will have some very negative motivations, apparently. Very, very cool. It should have a very interesting dynamic. You look back at Fallout 4, and even to a lesser degree, some of the um, earlier games. Admittedly, if you look towards more like the Slavers in uh, Paradise... Uh, Paradise from the God, I can't remember the name of it now. From Fallout 3, anyway. Paradise Falls, that's the one. Um, obviously they were an NPC faction who were very nefarious, so I think it'll be a bit more subtle than that, that's the tone I got from what uh, they were saying at QuakeCon, but it sounds like there'll be some really, really cool motivations and surprises and things going on in and amongst the settler side of things, as well as the raiders, which should be very, very cool. Along with that, there'll be a reputation system, which they've mentioned at E3 and given us a bit more detail. So it's not going to lock you in. You won't just sort of move over and over and over and have them hate you and stay hating you. You'll be able to claw your way back into their good graces. But it's going to be based um, as much on the actions you take and who you side with as the dialogue choices you make. Speaking of the dialogue choices, 
Those are going to focus on or take advantage of the special system and perks. I think perks will be a lesser degree, but more the special system. So if you've specced heavily into strength or charisma or perception or whatever, you'll get new options appearing in your dialogue tree based on the fact you've done so. So that should open up role playing options a lot more than they've had. They've basically made it clear here at QuakeCon today that uh, the game will be much, much more RPG centric. It's going to feel way more like an RPG than it has done to date along with it once the Wastelanders uh, update drops into the game in November. So that'll be a very, very welcome, very, very big change I think a lot of us are looking forward to. Yeah, bringing back Fallout 3 elements, that's uh, somewhat roost into glasses, I suppose, for me, but it's where I came into the Fallout series, so I'm really excited for that. It should also add a great deal more replayability if you've got different character builds giving you different um, effects on conversations. Your reputation with different factions is also going to have an impact. It'll open up new dialogue options, close off other ones perhaps, and generally affect the way you interact with different factions. So that should be very, very cool. And you've got the choice. You can go either way or you can go down the middle and work with both factions. And if you want to go one way and change your mind later, you'll be able to claw your way back into the good graces of anybody you upset as well. So very, very cool. So along with all these other changes with Wastelanders, obviously we've already seen there are going to be new monsters. We've had a look at uh, this thing with the gangling legs and dangling arms and a body that looks kind of like a child's drawing but horribly mutated. That's going to be apparently called a Wendigo Colossus, which looks interesting, is apparently a very very creepy thing, as if Wendigos weren't bad enough already. There we go. Um, along with something of returning monsters from the really old games, the Fallout 1, Fallout 2, stuff like that, they mentioned floaters, which are apparently creatures that occurred in the early games. Not haven't played enough of them to know anything about those. Maybe that'll mean a bit more to you guys. We'll have to see. But returning creatures from older games is very, very cool. I think we're looking forward to that and new challenges. They're also bringing in a vast array of new weaponry. So at the moment, we only have one Gauss rifle and the, the mods within that. There's going to be a whole series of Gauss weapons coming in uh, and skill trees to go with that or perk cards to go with that, which is very, very cool. So you'll be able to spec into Gauss weapons, new plasma weapons, Archery is something I'm very excited for. That's coming uh, along with Wastelanders as well. It's going to include bows from what we've seen in the trailer. We haven't actually seen those before. We've just got the fairly ineffective crossbow at the moment. You'll also get more perks to go with that, so it'll become much, much more viable. And you'll be able to get different types of uh, arrows, things like that. Explosive arrows were mentioned, strapping dynamite to your arrows, things like that. So there's going to be a lot you can do with that that sounds very very cool i personally definitely want to set up a character to go down that road that should be tons of fun i'm looking forward to that a lot as i say the provisional date for nuclear uh, nuclear winter wastelanders is november of this year my guess would be around and about i believe it was the 14th was last year's launch date so it's all focused on year two so presumably after launch so yeah, somewhere around about the 14th, second, third week of November is when we're likely to receive Wastelanders. Obviously, as I say, everything's subject to not being any disasters along the way between now and then, and um, therefore be provisional. But, fingers crossed, we know when we're going to get this massive, massive overhaul. And along with this, I should say, we're going to touch on in a minute, there's a whole load of other changes coming as well. It'll be very, very cool. So... The last section of things that they covered at QuakeCon was more community-driven, player-driven changes, suggestions, and requests. So these are written on specific, they don't focus on specific content beats or updates, uh, although most of them seem to be around and about the Wastelanders time frame. But there's some really, really cool things in here that I think people are going to like a lot. So first and foremost, they're making massive changes to the event system. Right now, it's um, a little frustrating. It costs a lot to get there. You don't know what rewards you're going to get. It can be a drag to get through things. They're going to remove the fast travel cost for events. So you'll be able to open them up on your map, go there at no extra cost to yourself, which is very, very cool. Uh, they're also going to significantly increase the visibility and the UI elements on the map for events. So you'll be able to see what's going on, see where they are. You're going to be able to see the timers for events that have timers. Um, before you head over there, so you know whether or not you're wasting your time if there's only like two minutes left, for example. You'll also be able to see the rewards you might get from it much more clearly. And speaking of rewards, they are going to make those rewards much more reliable drops, much more easy to get rewards that are worth having. 
so you'll be able to consistently more reliably get good rewards and you'll also be more likely to get a reward for just taking part temporarily so if you arrive play for a bit and leave rather than losing all the rewards you'll at least get something or have a much better chance of getting something anyway which is a, a cool little change it makes it much more valuable and it talks about them being events being a cornerstone of the game and this will certainly up that a little bit i think so that's very very cool make events much more fun to tackle and much more enjoyable to farm as well and less of a grind which is always welcome i think for most players so there is a big change coming along with wastelanders that they've mentioned here at quakecon as well that is being touted within um, bethesda as their sort of working title as a concept called renormalization which i think is going to develop some fairly mixed feelings amongst people but i think given some of the other things i talked about and i'm going to mention in a moment it will actually be a really good and necessary valuable change so the concept is that there is going to be a humongous balance overhaul along with um, Wastelanders. Exactly when and the timing and how it's going to pan out, they're still working on. But it's going to result in a massive shift in weapon effectiveness and the trade-offs involving choosing different weapons. So that will be cool. Hopefully it will bring more viability, a greater range of viable playstyles. Certainly with including new gear like the archery stuff and the gauss weapons, stuff like that new plasma weapons, it'll open up new character builds and new play styles, so that'll be very, very cool. But uh, it also requires a, a huge balance shift to make sure this is going to work well. The other thing is they're hoping, obviously, that Wastelanders is going to bring a lot of players who previously weren't interested or maybe played and left back to the game. Um, so you'll have a lot of low-level new players coming in. So this renormalization is going to involve decreasing the power difference between high level players and low level players so bringing them closer together if you're a high level you'll still be way more powerful than a low level but the difference should be smaller the goal is that if high level players and low level players end up at the same events they're playing together in the same locations yada 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 they'll be able to more effectively influence what's going on so you won't hopefully you'll have less instances where extremely high level players are just one tapping everything and the low level players can't get any benefit because of that you know they can't get any damage onto a creature so they don't get xp rewards they don't get rewards from the drops hopefully that'll normalize it a little bit you'll still be way more powerful if you're level 300 than if you're level 30 but the difference should be smaller i know that's going to make a lot of high level players and those who've been there since the beginning of the game nervous but amongst other things, I've mentioned many times how I feel about the challenge in the game. I definitely want to see more challenge and see the game getting more difficult. Hopefully to a degree that will have that effect. Although the thing I'm going to talk about in a second is going to offset that. In fact, it'll offset the whole thing to a significant amount. But yeah, that's a big thing. I definitely want to hear more details on what this is going to imply from Bethesda. I don't think they have more details right now. This is an ongoing process. It's something they're still working on. They're iterating and they're trying things. They're going to see what works, doesn't, pull it out, tweak, try again. And this is several months off into the future. But uh, hopefully it will make the game a much more balanced experience and enjoyable experience across the board for everybody, I think. So that's obviously going to be the goal. We'll have to see what actually happens. I'd imagine the Inside the Vault blog post will contain a lot more details as we get closer to November. So that's something to look out for. So the next big thing that you've uh, teased before in interviews and such like is that they are going to be introducing a legendary perk system. So the details here are very, very provisional. It is very much a work in progress, but as it currently stands, the concept is um, for high level players, every level of, well, every 50 levels from starting at level 50 and therefore 100, 150, 200, so on, you will get the option to pick one of your special abilities to make legendary. So if you're a strength build, you'll be able to say pick that and it will make your strength um, significantly more influential on your build and significantly more powerful. It will open up a whole range of new perks that you've not previously had access to that you'll be able to then rank up that are much, much more powerful than the existing ones and should therefore make your builds even more specialized, more powerful and make those high level characters feel really more legendary which should be really cool hopefully that means some late game content coming with it to balance that off because right now this will make you way more powerful with nothing to do with it so fingers crossed that bolt raids in particular and other things coming in the future that they haven't told us about will have a significant impact there or be 
built into this, so we'll have to see how that pans out. As I say, this is very, very provisional. But yeah, the idea is you'll, every 50 levels, you pick a special point, specialize into it, and become even more powerful along that with new sets of perks, new ranks for all those perks, all geared towards becoming way more powerful. Obviously, this is going to offset the um, balance pass and the renormalization thing quite significantly, so presumably they're going to have to work on those two things together and see how that works. Very cool fact for those of you who've got characters at very high levels, which are quite a lot of us at this stage, this is going to be, based on the current situation anyway, it could change, bear this in mind, a retroactive factor. So every if you've got a level 300 character, you'll still get the benefit for 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, um, for all the ones you've passed, so you'll be able to immediately apply those once this change goes live. Um, as I say, whether or not it'll still be 50 levels, and so on and so forth, and the exact details are still subject to change, it's work in progress, but this is something they're working on, and it is coming to make those high-level players feel a bit more special. It's also going to feature something we need a lot more information on, which is a new game plus angle. So you'll be able to take your legendary abilities, your perks and so on and so forth, start a new character and bring those into your new game. Exactly how this is going to work, they haven't given us too many details on yet, but it'll be interesting. Obviously, again, watch those inside the Vault blog post, so we'll of course be keeping you up to date on those as well. But uh, this is something, as I say, they're working on and it'll be very interesting to see how they're going to do this, where it's going to go, and hopefully make uh, building new characters fun and interesting for players who've been playing the game for a long time and want to re-experience the new content as a new character, which would be very, very cool. As I mentioned with uh, all of this stuff as well, there's going to be a massive balance overhaul, working on um, weapons, armor, things like that, bringing those into a more effective balance, hopefully. Now that the game's been out for a while, they've had the time to figure out how that works. Also, these changes are also going to have a massive impact of things like that as well, so that will make uh, the necessity of a balance pass even greater. So expect to be an overhaul along with all this other stuff as well. I know a huge amount of us will be wondering about the camp side of things, what they said on that. And what they said was, not nearly as much as I was hoping for. Probably means they're working on a number of things, but they don't know what's going to work and what isn't yet. So provisionally, they said they are looking at increasing camp budgets. However, this does come with a trade-off, presumably server stability. So how they're exactly going to manage that, they're not sure. So we're looking at creative ways to, to give players more opportunities to build in, in different places in the world. Um, maybe, you know, also with things like private servers and stuff like that. Yeah, you did hear this correctly. Um, they have said this is coming sooner than you might expect, which is very, very cool. Also vague, but very, very cool. I know a lot of us have been waiting for that. Those are people who want to mod their game, people who are looking to build more and more expansively. That's something I'll be very, very interested in. Uh, these are things they're looking at with private servers, and sooner than you might expect is, as I say, very open-ended and vague, and gives them a lot of room to play with it, but it also probably means, in my guess, uh, my interpretation would be, we might, should well be seeing private servers before the end of the year, I hope. They did say back when, back even before the game launched, that private servers were on the radar, and they were expecting not in the first year, or probably early in the second year. And this is still fitting in with that time scale, so fingers crossed for before the end of the year we'll have private servers and it'll be really interesting to see where we can go with that. Now, I know people are modding the game already, but obviously there's a limit to what Bethesda will let you get away with. Quite rightly so, with it being a, a shared environment. But uh, you'll be able to do more and more outrageous things, of course, once you get your private servers, which will be very, very cool for a lot of people. So the last thing they touched on, of course, is everybody's uh, new favourite thing, I think. The seasonal events. Obviously, people loved Fastnacht. Meat Week is coming up around in about the 1st of August. That's the date they're working on. So far, they're still on track from that, from the sound of things. It is very, very cool. Obviously, that's uh, focused on Graham collecting different kind of meats and having a big barbecue and a cookout. It sounds like, reading between the lines of what they've said, that this will be a recurring seasonal event. So different times a year, Graham will be doing cookouts based on sort of cooking for the season, I guess. Um, this is completely unconfirmed, it's just a hunch I got from reading between the lines of what they're saying, but that would be very, very cool. They've also said they're working on a seasonal event for Halloween, which is very, very cool. Looking forward to that, I know a lot of people are excited for that sort of thing. Nobody's surprised there, I wouldn't think, but uh, yeah, very, very cool. These uh, flagpole events are always good for the game as well. 
They're also looking at events for early winter. Presumably there'll be another series of events for Christmas, hopefully seasonal events there. Didn't say so, but I would imagine I'd be very surprised if there weren't. And he also alluded to Fasnacht coming back again next year, which we kind of expected, but good to have a little more hint in that direction as well. Uh, they had a lot of fun with it and they wanted to come back, so very cool. And I know I'm looking forward to it because I missed it this year. Hey. <laughs> so, yeah. Massive, massive changes coming to Fallout 76 before the end of 2019. Very, very excited for a lot of these. It's very, very cool. It should be very, very good. Um, and particularly surrounding Wastelanders, a kind of overhaul that is going to massively change the gameplay experience, which I think a lot of us will be very excited for. It'll totally refresh the game, assuming even a half of this works, it should do that. Of course, there are bound to be a few hiccups along the way. We should know this by now. Anybody who's been playing online games for any length of time will be aware that these things don't always go according to plan. We've had a, a recent um, prime example of this surrounding Patch 11. It, it happens, like it or not. Um, I shared something on Twitter, actually, the other day, of um, a clip from a stream of PUBG, wherein... Uh, a player who has been playing this game since beta and who is a very, very well-known streamer of it dropped into a game, his parachute didn't open, and he hit the ground and it put him back up in the air and it did open, and then he dropped to the ground and everything seemed fine, apart from the fact it then put him back in the air again with no parachute and he died. So this is a game that's been out since 2017. If that game's still having issues of that magnitude, we're going to still run into road bumps with Fallout 76. It's just going to happen. Unfortunately, that's just uh, the nature of these uh, massive online games. Hopefully, as the game develops, they'll be having fewer of them and they get better at dealing with it. But hopefully, we'll have a nice smooth launch for Wastelanders. But I would expect a few kind of wobbles along the way. Nonetheless, this is going to be such a big change that I think a lot of us are looking forward to. And if it lives up to the suggestion that it's going to make it a massively more RPG game, game that feels like an RPG and has a lot more role-playing opportunities, that would be fantastic for, I think, 98% of players. I'm sure there'll be a few that aren't bothered, but I think most of us will be overwhelmingly happy with what they've got coming. So, yeah. Bit of a long ramble, a lot of details in there. I do hope it was interesting and informative. I hope you guys are ex as excited for this as I am. Please do let me know what you think, what you're looking forward to, any concerns. We'll uh, have a bit of a, a chat down in the comments as well. If you did enjoy the video, please do hit those like buttons, subscribe button if you haven't already. It's very, very much appreciated. And if you're really enjoying it, please do consider becoming a channel member as well. We've got some fun perks, which uh, I'm going to have a look at uh, updating probably very, fairly soon. We'll see what happens. Um, so you can click that join button, have a look at those as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel directly, that support is massively, massively appreciated. For now, social media links down in the description as always. If you want to keep up to date with me over there, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So please do come out and come over and check out what I'm doing over there as well. So for now, thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.